So in conclusion, in 2016, in pediatric IBD, the idea, of concept, the, the idea of the concept of conventional therapy is the waste of time. That there is actually a huge role for enteral nutrition, and in my opinion, we should not ignore it, nor we should bury our head in, in the sand, because our patients are eating something that is contributing to the inflammation. However, it may not be the end point to say, change your diet and this will heal your IBD. We have not seen that. The goal of our therapy in pediatric IBD is to get to that stage of deep mucosal healing with zero ulceration. However, we have to keep in mind that the timing of when we get our patients there is also critical. So what do I take from this in my practice? This is a patient that I saw a few weeks ago, and my wonderful nurse, Teresa, is here, so she can attest to this. Uh, this child had ileoclonic disease and presented to us in growth failure. He has a family history uh, with a sibling uh, having complicated disease and uh, surgery for Crohn's. This is what my treatment plan has been for this young man. From week zero, since we diagnosed him, we started exclusive enteral nutrition. Once we're done with the exclusive enteral nutrition, this child will go on a diet that is modeled after the specific carbohydrate diet. It doesn't mean you know, synthetic food. It doesn't mean this or that. It means healthy food, not out of a package without sugar added. This is very simple. Now, I will start an immune modulator the second week that this patient is on exclusive enteral nutrition. So I'm going to overlap both treatments. Now, what the exclusive enteral nutrition does, not only does it induce mucosal healing, improve growth, set the stage for better response later, what this does is actually give me a time frame to allow the patient to get all the vaccines that he or she are due for. This is a window that you would not have if you were treating with steroids or even with TNF-alpha antibodies. Now, the second week, I'm going to start an immune modulator. And again, I'm not going to delve into which one. We have an excellent talk coming up about this. And the fourth week of diagnosis is the time that I will start a TNF-alpha antibody and overlap with an immune modulator. Again, not the focus of my talk here. And I think that this patient will have the best chance to get the best remission, the best course, and the easiest transition when you guys see him. Thank you. from bench to bedside. So really what we've been talking about is defining the role of genetic components, right? So what are we doing with these? The role of the human microbiome, we didn't discuss, but again, this, you can't just get a genetic test and expect to look at that in isolation. So we're learning that, hey, the microbiome is affected by your genetics and vice versa, right? So sometimes your genetics predispose your microbiome, sometimes the microbiome affects how your genetics are expressed. So we have to understand that portion of it. Eventually, these probably will become much more common, but we have to have practical systems to understand what we're doing with these tests.